In the last playlist, we talked about multi-threading, kind of introduced you to the concepts, and we looked at how you should do multi-threading kind of in the Scala way. Scala still has access to lower level Java libraries, and while you really should consider using things like Scala Futures with uh, their composability and the parallel collections and actors, you should consider using those any time that they make sense. It is helpful to know about what's going on underneath those, and there are some, some situations where maybe those won't be able to efficiently do what you want to do, and then you might have to turn to the lower level libraries. So in this video, we're going to start talking about Java threads. And now the people who created Java actually showed uh, great foresight when they put threads into the primary language inside of the, the standard libraries back in the mid-1990s. Uh, they realized that multi-threading was going to be significant. To illustrate a little bit of what we might want to do and how we might handle things if we're going to do stuff at this low level, I'm going to have us write a little program. We'll make an app and the idea is this is going to ask the user for some information, but if they don't answer in a certain amount of time, it's going to cut them off. So we can start by writing our normal code that would ask you know, a user, let's say, for their name. And so then we'll have, or sorry, not their name, their age import io.stdin underscore and then we'll read an integer here and if their age is less than 18 whatever this is for we are that's our age limit we say no Otherwise, they're allowed in. Okay, that would be our normal program for this, but we want it so that if they take longer than 10 seconds, they, we just cut them off and the program's going to terminate. And so this, these things will never be printed. One way we could do that would be to start a separate thread that's gonna wait 10 seconds. And in fact, we could even print, the, print out a countdown for them. And we're going to use an, basically a, a, a plain Java thread. So these are in java.lang.thread. They're automatically imported. We don't have to do anything for them. Now, once again, the vast majority of time, you should probably not be using this. Instead, you should be using uh, a future for, for this. This absolutely guarantees it always creates a new thread that, that has real overhead to it. Whereas a future might be able to reuse older threads uh, that have already been created so that you don't have to create new ones. So when we make a thread, you can basically do this in one of two ways. We can either pass in an argument that is something that is of type runnable, so it has a run method, or you can override the run method inside of thread. So that's the one that I'm going to do here. Run doesn't take any arguments and it doesn't give back a value to us. And what I want to do inside of here and I could just make it so it pauses for 10 seconds and then kills the program. I actually want to show a countdown though. So we're going to have four i in 10 to one by negative one because we're counting down. And we will print out the value of i and then we're going to use thread.sleep to sleep for one second. Okay. If it gets all the way through that, then we'll say time's up. And well, I'll stop there for a second and we'll run this to see what happens. So if I run this right now, it tells me to, oh, I'm actually missing one very important line. With futures, just creating the futures made it happen. With threads, that doesn't make it happen. So I actually have to tell the thread to start. So I'm going to call start 
on our count thread and now we get our countdown. So the first time I'm just going to wait for it to count all the way down. Gets the end prints out times up but it didn't actually stop and I can put a number in here and it still gives me my answer. Well that's not what we wanted. So we would have to forcefully make this exit here, at least as that's one way of handling this. So I can make the whole thing exit. And if we run this again, and the countdown goes, one, time's up, and it all stops. And so I can't enter anything else. What happens if I actually enter a value before the timer goes? Well, <laughs> it printed welcome, but, but the timer's still going. That's not really what I want either. So one, an equally heavy-handed way to do that would be that after it's printed out whatever we wanted here, we can terminate the whole program that way. Okay, now these two terminating the program statements really are not ideal, okay? Uh, and actually, I should probably show that this can get the other output as well. Okay, so that's kind of that's doing what we wanted, but of course this couldn't be part of a larger program because we would we are forcing the entire program to terminate. And if I wanted to do this, you know, as part of a larger program, I, I really need to make it so that the program can keep running. So we'll come back and we'll look at how we could adjust this program so that it didn't have a force terminate. Basically, I want to get rid of the system.exits uh, so that theoretically we could do this as part of some other program um, so that it would be more useful to us.